Hello there, person. Hey, let's look. Um, why don't we check out some fun stuff with Wraithbinder? That's been happening this week, huh? Yeah. One thing that's new this week is working on the uh, death sequence. So death, yeah. Let's, let's tackle that subject. Um. Uh, but yeah, no, it's really kind of cool. You get to uh, in in Wraithbinder when you die, you just keep on playing as a wraith. You're dead. You're bound to the person that killed you. But um, it was always kind of uh, it always needed something more whenever you killed somebody because it just I don't know, it wasn't that that fun. So what I added this week was a really fun death sequence. It, a, a cool special animation that happens whenever you you uh, die or you kill someone. So. Let's check out. I'm gonna I'm gonna use the some debug commands to uh, hurt this player down to they're almost dead. Whoops. Oh, they got a mender. <laughs> I'm just healing. Okay, that didn't work at all. Let's go ahead and just remove that mender really quick. So uh, yeah, so special death sequence, and it's it's based on these uh, some a couple different Blender animations. Here's where uh, basically this is part of the animation where you fly back and then wham, you hit the ground. Okay, the game's running here. Okay, let's try this again this time. This time this player won't be able to heal inside their base, and uh, we can kill him a bit easier here. One more. There we go. Okay, so now he's down to basically very little health. I'm going to hit him and uh, we'll see this this, de this new death animation sequence. Maybe hit him again. There we go. So you can see he flies back, hits the ground, sits there for a while, flashes to the new team color, and then turns into a wraith. Um, so and as, as you can see also there's a cool new effect going on when you're a wraith you got this wispy smoke coming off you, and he's glitching out a little bit. See how he's, his actual um, character is, has a little glitch going on? Um, excited about that. And let's check out what it looks like when you're actually a wraith yourself. It actually changes your cam your uh, your shader and everything in your from your perspective. So let's look at that too. There's some more effects going on. Um, I'll turn myself into a wraith right when I start. And uh, we'll be able to see this new effect. Oh. oh, yeah. I didn't have to change that CPP file for this just to show this, but uh, we did. So, there we go. So, we've got the wispy smoke coming off my character. Got a glitch going on on the character itself. And then we've got a whole screen glitch. Not a whole screen, not quite the whole screen. It's actually just these. Uh, Anything that is a voxel in the world has a glitch going on and a little bit of interlacing. So you can see there's definitely an effect going on. And it's it's a little bit more apparent when you die yourself. Um, I could actually show that if I were to um, start off as not a wraith and go to turn the bot's intelligence back on and we can just run this. And I'll use the debug commands to get myself down to real low health, so a player will definitely kill me fast. And we can see what it looks like when your screen goes from a normal screen like this. There's all these regular shader effects and whatnot. Come on, dude. Here I am. What's he, what's he doing? Oh my gosh. Ah. Oh. Why is he not getting to me? This is related to some stuff I did this week. There we go, come on. Oh, what the hell? Just attack me, man. Oh, wow, I gotta work on this. This is embarrassing. There we go. There we go. So there, we got this cool new effect going on with the wraiths. Oh, look at this guy. He turned into the, got the minifier. He's a tiny little character. Oh, it's great. I love it. 
Yeah, I was working on the bots code this week, so um, so there's definitely some new issues I must have created here. But this cool new effect, right? Loving it. Okay, let's check out two more things I'm working on right now, uh, and that is we're gonna have to recompile this to see this happen. But we got statues and blades that you can drop. Oh my gosh, I can't wait for this blade thing to finish. Um, so the reasoning behind having some statues, we'll, we'll check out what this looks like here after this, after this compiles. Uh, but uh, from watching my friends play this game and uh, basically just watching other people play, what, one question that always comes up is, where the heck is my base? You start off at the beginning, you know where your base is, you're in it. But after a while, you start running around the map and you're like, you lose, you take some damage, you're low on health, boom, boom, oh my gosh, I'm low on health. You, and then you're like, where the heck is my base? How do I get back to my base and go uh, to heal? Because you got a mender in your base you can heal with. Um, so I've, the idea here is to create some, some of these statues, right? So this is not quite finished. Uh, I want this statue to look more gray and statuesque and whatnot. And I'll probably do a different pose. But this is a copy of myself right here, a statue that represents me. How else can you get a better representation of where your base is than to have a statue of yourself, right? And what will be really neat is to, once I finish this, you'll be able to, when you actually go and steal someone else's base, their statue will turn into your statue. So it's easy to know that, hey, I already stole this base. I don't need to steal it again. Or, hey, this is my base and I can heal here. Uh, so we've got, let's go check out, let's uh, go up here. This guy's got, that's Russ. I know that's, that's Russ's statue for sure. And then this statue right here, boom, helmet, unique character. That player will know who they are. So I think that's going to be a neat thing to be able to have these statues in the game. And then, um, okay, let's check out the next thing here is, uh, so um, the reasoning behind this, is this is uh, the idea and the reasoning behind this is basically that, uh, first of all, the reasoning. So when you're, when you're fighting this game, what I've noticed a lot is, especially the bots fighting themselves or even players fighting, you, you tend to use your, your ability to uh, swing your... To, to punch and to use your sword, your basically your melee attacks. Uh, you use those a lot, right? It's your main main button. You're gonna press that a lot. And what happens is when you start fighting other people in the game, in the, in the match, it turns into sometimes just like a little bit of a Rochambeau. You're like melee, 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 and the, and uh, to com to combat that just boringness of just swinging, swing, swing, swing. I uh, added it so you would bounce off each other. Let's see if we'll, we'll bounce off. Yeah, see if we just bounced off each other there. Whenever two attacks are simultaneous, you'll bounce off each other, which helps a little bit. But if you've got a persistent enemy like this guy right now, um, it kind of turns boring. See, look at this. We're just, we're just melee attacking the whole time. When we have, we could have bows, we could have shields. We killed me. Killed me within my own base. That's amazing. So the idea here is you'll be able to lose your blade. So um, so I've got this kind of set up right here where you can actually go and uh, pick up a blade. So that's kind of the first part of it, right? Is um, before you can lose it, uh, it's nice to be able to just test if you can even pick it up. So I got this little blade sitting on the ground and you can go over to the blade and pick it up and you'll gain the blade ability right away. Instead of having, just having your punch, You'll pick this up and boom, you got your blade. So that's step one, right? Being able to pick up your blade. Step two is going to be able to be lose your blade in battle. I can I can imagine this cool thing where you boom, you're, you, you, you start attacking other players and wham, your sword goes flipping out of your hands and lands on the ground and you got to go pick it back up. So that's the idea. I think it will make it more interesting. Um, for one, you'll be able to run, run around without a melee attack for a little while. Uh, and I'll, I'll probably have to remove the punch ability for that for this all to happen. So you'll start off with no abilities whatsoever. Um, and or, or maybe you start... Yeah, you probably start off with no abilities and the, and the sword will just be on the ground. You pick it up, which will be kind of a nice reward anyways. As a player, you'll be like, oh, what's this? A sword? Sweet. Boom. You got an ability right then, too. It's that fast. Um... So you feel rewarded for the fact that you discovered something like it, even though it's right on the ground right there. It's kind of neat to be able to pick it up and be like, hey, I got that. This is mine. Um, and then to be able to lose it. What the hell? Oh, man. 
<laughs> that was super funny. He was into the dead pose. He was laying on the ground, but able to move. He's supposed to have a move block timer. I wonder what happened there. Ah, oh, the new bugs you introduce when you add new fun stuff. So that's it. That's the, that's what I'm working on right now is these statues and the blade. Being able to lose your blade and also being able to pick up the blade again and seeing how that goes, right? It's just going to be fun. Maybe it won't. Maybe I'll take out this whole thing and be like, you know what, let's just put it back to the way it was. But I have a feeling this is going to be a really cool thing to have it, to be able to lose your blade temporarily and have to go pick it up again. So uh, that's it for this video. What's going on with Wraithbinder this week? Thanks for watching this, all right? And we'll catch you next time.